Canon 3347. A settlement certificate, also known as a birth certificate since 1837, the first time the word birth certificate was used, is an official document issued to validly recorded poor paupers, you, granting them certain basic rights and entitlement to benefits in exchange for recognition of their status as being owned as property and lawful slaves, also known as indentured servants and bondsmen. A settlement, therefore, is equivalent to a voluntary slave plantation. If you have a settlement certificate, if you have a birth certificate, yes, that entitles you to basic minimum sustenance. But it also means you are owned, you are property, you are a pauper, you are disenfranchised, you are a slave. That is what it is. That is exactly what it is. Now, how do we know and how can I prove this to you? Well, the only way to prove it is to understand where it comes from. So I'm going to go through these in a fairly quick order because I hope you'll read them separate. This is Article 325, Settlement Birth Certificate. 3348. Under King Henry VIII of England and his Venetian Magyar advisors, the first poor laws were promulgated around 1535. What it did was it effectively said that the Church of England was obliged to take care of the poor. Now, in exchange for them taking care of the poor, the poor were basically entrusted as property to the church. So the poor became the property of the church. Simple deal. You make sure they don't starve, they're your property. That's the first. 3349, in Queen Elizabeth of England, uh, we see that for the first time, uh, in the Erection of Coges Act in 1588, peasants now, uh, peasants on common land, could no longer erect their own property, and their own domiciles, without getting permission. And so we start to see a transition from the land, the, the serfs on the land, to being landless paupers, being forced to go to the cities. Now in 1601, in Canon 3350, we see that Elizabeth I also introduced the poor laws in 1601. You can find them on the internet. It's all there. None of this is hidden. It's all in plain sight. And what happened in the poor laws is we see the introduction of two overseers of the poor. These are the prototype roles before we see the guardians come into play. And each parish elected at Easter and funded through a levy on the local rates of the landowners, the gentry. The, and this is now the tax, the council taxes. So when you pay rates to a council, you're effectively paying a poor tax, a poor tax to pay for the paupers. I'm sorry if people are getting uh, poor sound here. Uh, I'm trying my best, and I'm sorry the audio is, is the best I can be tonight. Under 3351, Article uh, Canon 3351. Now, this is where it starts to change. Under Charles II of England, we see the introduction of settlements. The settlement really being a plantation. And what happens in uh, 1662 with the Settlement Act and the Poor Relief Act of 1662 is the issuance of a thing called a settlement certificate. Now, it was equivalent to a birth certificate, a passport, and a social security rolled into one document. It was a very straightforward system. The child's birthplace was its place of settlement, and, and it was under the mother and the father, or usually under the mother, the certificate of some parish. And they were registered to the parish, so they were registered as property. Now, from seven upwards, the child themselves could be apprenticed and gain their own settlement certificate, if they were indentured. So if a child was going to be sent off to work, and it's incredible to think that children were sent off at such an age, but they were sent off potentially at seven and indentured off to the coal mines or wherever they were working, 
uh, then, then they would get their own certificate. Now, under the forms of the Settlement Act of 1662 and the Poor Relief Act, no one was allowed to move from town to town without the appropriate settlement certificate. Sound familiar to a passport? No one. If a person entered and didn't have an official settlement certificate, then they were considered a stranger and there would be an examination. Now, if they were found to have means and ability, uh, then they may be accepted, or if they were rejected, then a removal order was issued. And the concept of the eviction and removal notice that sheriffs issue as part of foreclosures today actually originates from this 1662 removal order. It only has effect if you are a pauper, if you are a slave, if you are considered one of the poor, if you have a P on your passport. Now, it doesn't get better, it actually gets worse. It was considered a privilege to have a settlement certificate. And under a settlement certificate, uh, when you move from one parish to another, the original parish would have to, had to indemnify the new parish. And this is the form of underwriting. So the settlement certificate became a form of bonding, became a form of, of insurance. Now, along this way, in 1723, the ruling elite came up with the idea that they were going to start privatising common land. They wanted the land themselves. Sheep were worth more than people. Wool was extremely valuable. And they wanted the land. They wanted to kick off these people off the land. So they introduced the concept of workhouses and the Workhouse Test Act. Now, were forced to wear peas on their right shoulder. Now, in, in the 20th century, they were gold stars, but before any form of, of uh, anti-Semitism occurred, before any of that occurred in the world, there was anti-common um, uh, people in the forcing them to wear peas. Now, why were they forced to wear peas? They were forced to wear peas because if they weren't shoved into a workhouse owned by some friend of some government official to use them as slaves. They wanted to know where they were. And it's the same as the pee on prisoners in the 20th century. Exactly the same. That's exactly where it comes from. In Canon 335, it gets worse again. In 1773, the Enclosure Act of 1773, followed by the Enclosure Consolidation Act of 1801, effectively privatised massive amounts of common land for the benefit of a few, causing a huge influx of land peasants and causing enormous heartburn on the Anglican Church. In fact, the Anglican Church had to outsource the insurance and the indemnity of settlement certificates. And originally it was, it was included in this canon, but because I can't prove it yet, I can't include it in there. But exactly at this same time, a tiny coffee house that was frequented by sailors went from being a coffee house to being the first and largest insurance exchange in history. And thereafter, being the major underwriter of all the slave trade, that went on from this time. Well, all the dots are there, but I can't connect it and prove it yet. But of course, I'm referring to the Lloyd's Coffee House that in 1773 suddenly went from an insignificant coffee house to being a massive corporate player. And one can only presume that the underwriting when the Enclosure Act of 1773 disenfranchised tens and tens of thousands of peasants uh, to becoming paupers had something to do with it. Now, because in 3356, uh, the deliberate legal theft of land under parliamentary enclosure laws, this led to the most awful and cruel laws ever to be introduced. 
And this is the heart of the Industrial Revolution. The Poor Law Amendment Act of 1834 effectively stated that the poor could not receive any benefit unless they were constantly employed in a workhouse prison. Just to give you an idea of these prisons, these prisons were for men, women and children, but of course, under these laws, they could separate the children from the parents. Absolutely. And of course, they usually did to work in coal mines and die by the age of 25, worked to death. This is, by the way, after laws against slavery had been signed in the 1820s. This is with international law against slavery they were doing this. So if anyone thinks and says to you, oh, they couldn't have done this because there were slave laws, absolute rubbish. This is the perfect example of voluntary slavery, the poor laws. If you're poor, you must work. You must agree. So it's not slavery. You volunteer to be poor. It's your choice to be poor. You must work. All above board, all lawful, all lawful slavery, the modern system of lawful slavery. And this is exactly how the world evolved. Now, in 1834, Canon 3357, a number of historic changes were introduced. In 1934, they introduced the Poor Law Amendment Act, which we mentioned. And in that, they created the Board of Poor Law Guardians, also known as the Board of Guardians, and the Clerk of Magistrates Court holding the, the role of the Clerk of the Board of Guardians. In 1935, the Municipal Corporations Act was introduced, which standardised the corporate model for towns and boroughs. In 1936, the Births and Deaths Registration Act was introduced for the first time, creating the General Register Office and requiring uniform records of birth, deaths and marriages. And this is the birth on the 1st of July of 1837 of what we now know as the birth certificate. No longer called a settlement certificate, but a birth certificate. A certificate for paupers disenfranchised of their land birthright to be considered lawful voluntary slaves that must work till they die, underwritten by the Society of Lloyds, as it still is today. Now, and, in, and I'll just cover up a couple more things. In 1871, the system was put under the vital statistics, under the health, when they changed in Local Government Act, 1871, Public Health Act, 1872, 1875, and, of course, this mirrors in most countries like America and Australia and other as well. So when you look at your birth certificate, it is not a receipt. It is not a valuable token. Yes, it entitles you to mere sustenance. Your society can't let you starve to death. But when you hold it, you admit and consent to be known as a slave, a pauper, to be disenfranchised of any rights that the Constitution claims you have. If you hold a birth certificate, you have no rights under the Constitution. I hope now you understand the history of it, understand now the clarity of it, and that we do not have any more debate in terms of people saying, well, the birth certificate is valuable or not. It is part of the system of lawful slavery. And that is why when you sent it back in with your ecclesiastical deed poll, you were making clear you no longer held a birth certificate, you no longer were to be deemed as a pauper. And that is why the system has failed to have any adequate responses to any of you that have done your EDP because they have no response to people who wake up and are no longer prepared to be a slave in their cults to be cogs in their overall wheel. That's birth certificates. Okay, moving on. I want to talk about Article 326 and Guardians because Guardians is an important part. And while many people have been doing some wonderful, wonderful videos and audios about the role of being your executor and about claiming your rights, 
this whole area of guardianship is being largely missed.